from soundguitarlessons.com where I teach musicianship skills on the guitar so we can express ourselves more freely. In this video, I'm going to teach you this arrangement that you just heard in the beginning of the video of Fur Elise by Beethoven. I played a shortened version of it because I didn't use any other repeats in the in the intro, but uh, I have sheet music for this with tabs and notation. If you want to download it, you can get it totally for free to follow along. It's in my solo guitar arrangement pack, which has a bunch of other awesome arrangements as well. You can get that for free with the link in the top of the description. So first I'm just going to play through it at a very specific tempo just so you can practice along with that if you want to work towards it. I'll play it at 80 beats per minute just to demonstrate the full arrangement at a strict tempo. Then I'm going to walk through the arrangement just to give you little tips and guidelines for uh, specific technique things or things to watch out for or recommendations that I have for playing it nice and clear and playing it clean and making some good music out of it. So let's jump to the guitar view and I'm going to play the demonstration of the full arrangement that you can download for free with the solo guitar arrangement pack. So I'll jump to the guitar view now and play that full arrangement for you at 80 beats per minute. If you want to get this down, I recommend working up towards trying to play along with my demonstration that I just did there. However, once you feel like you have it down at that tempo, I do recommend working on it without the metronome because part of the expressiveness of this that can be so rewarding is playing with the time a little bit. So I don't, I like to do the demonstrations in time so I can show the sheet music exactly where it is as I'm playing. But the way I played it at the very beginning of the video was much more kind of flexing with the time. And that is a far more satisfying sound to me. So let's go in and walk through um, measure by measure. And I'll just mention things that I think are helpful for you if you're going to work on this arrangement. First off, I'll say that I'm playing with a pick and I like being able to play with a pick on this arrangement just for fun, but I very often play with my fingers for a lot of stuff. So I just switch depending on how I'm feeling. This can totally be done with your fingers. You can play it like a classical piece. You can play it on a classical guitar. I think it's just kind of since it happens to work, there are no chords that are skipping strings that are hard to strum. So I think it's kind of cool as a as an arrangement that one could play totally with the pick. So that is how I'm doing it. As we start off here, because of the nature of the open string and then the D sharp there, you know, we could go. And so what I want to say is don't intentionally ring this over and also don't worry about it like needing to mute perfectly. I think it's kind of cool that it's a little, can overlap a little or not. So you can cut it off by having the part of your finger touch the string. But if a little bit of it rings over, that's fine too. I kind of like, like letting it kind of be whatever it is. 
And finger-wise, I'm using finger three. I don't recommend finger four because it's just way harder to accurately land on when that comes back around. So I'm using three, and I think sometimes I'm even using two, but three is a great finger to use there. And then you can just shift over to where you need it for that next uh, D natural note. Just like that. Okay, and then while this finger is holding this note, you're gonna go to this chord. It's kind of like an A power chord there. Okay, and then you're gonna reach over with your pinky and play this. Now when you do this, this is the second full measure, don't hold this down. It's like a melody note. So you're gonna go, you're gonna lift off right after you play it, so. Which is nice, and it's okay that these are ringing. So it's very tricky, because sometimes it's okay for things to ring, and sometimes you don't want it to. It would just, we're not going for a specific arpeggio. You wanna lift that off there, okay? And this is an E major chord, their third full measure, okay? And it's okay for these to ring, just because it would be too hard. A lot of our consideration is, how difficult is it to get the, the sound that we want? With this lift off, it's actually easier to lift off. You don't have to hold it there. And then it makes it sound more like a melody and less like just a chord arpeggiation. This, you're already holding these exact two notes, so I just play them, you know, and then get to that next chord. Okay, from there, you're just holding that chord shape, so then you just jump over. And what I would say here is don't worry about this note being perfectly, you know, lasting all the way until it connects. Um, I'm being pretty loose with this stuff. I've gone through phases where I would really stress about is that connected fully up to the note, and um, it just depends on, you know, the the standards that you're having in the moment, and not even standards, honestly, the, the taste that you're having in the moment. And for some reason, because this is not like a true, this is just some a guitar arrangement that works, right? it's a very simplified version of this uh, well-known melody, super fun to play. I don't really stress about um, perfection as much as feeling on this one. That's just my take on, on how I like to interpret it. Okay, so second time, we're repeating this same stuff. Okay, pretty straightforward there, nothing I need to say. We'll go on to the B section. This is a great spot to really lean into some kind of time fluctuation. Kind of go rubato almost and lean, go into that. Here we are on the, where the repeat sign is. Okay, this is the third system, first full measure. And I would play that open G and then go over to your second finger here. Okay. And then with this second measure of this system, I play this open G and then open E. And when you play that open E, I would let go of the D. So you're holding this. That's a great example of making it, again, sound like a melody instead of where it's just... That's too bell-like. That's too just ringing. This cut off that D, so it really sounded like a melody. You can do it however you want. Those are just my recommendations for, you know, if we were, if we were sitting here right now and I was giving you a lesson, that's what I would tell you to do to get, to get it sounding clean. Okay, moving on, third measure of the third system. That's a really fun, just, if you're using a pick, that's a great pick exercise. Can you jump between these accurately? Okay, now this part can get people really confused. <laughs> if you're reading it, it's a little bit like, whoa, there's too many of those going on. How do I know how many I played? Or if you're memorizing it, it's like, how long am I supposed to do that? So you have to feel it in such a way that works. And I recommend not just counting it. Don't just go one, two, three, four, five. You know, I, I actually put it in the groups of it's adding two extra amounts of what it usually does. Does that make sense? Here's the intro usually. Okay. Da -do -da -do -da. There's, there's this kind of double da -do -da -do -da leading into the actual theme, right? So this is putting two of those in front of what we usually do in the normal intro. That's not very clear. Let me try to explain it better. It goes uh, one, two, then one, two, and now normal. Does that make sense? So here's one, then two, then one, then two, and now exactly how you would at the beginning. That's how I feel it. You can feel it any way you want. One, two, one, two, normal. Okay? I think 
that's everything that we need to talk about. Don't forget to play with dynamics. in there and I was just giving some example of digging in more and playing really light kind of exaggerating it a little bit just to show you how I mean we all know this 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 piece right and we can it, it's meant to be this romantic era kind of pre-classical era or early classical era like really emotional um with the way that we can interpret it so I think it's a fun one to play with nice and simple very doable for almost any level of guitar playing um, and just a fun one to, to have on our fingers once again you can get this arrangement with the link in the top of the description that's my solo guitar arrangement pack and there are a bunch of other awesome arrangements in there at multiple levels some of them advanced some of them very straightforward and simple if you're into classical interpretations there's Brahms lullaby is in there Bach minuet is in there this one is in there and then there's some jazz stuff too some chord melody stuff a lot of options in there uh, and if you just want to get it only for this for a lease of course please do link in the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon to get that i post a new lesson video every week i hope to see you in the next lesson thank you so much for watching take care and happy practicing